Yes. No. Oh, yes. Yes, yes, we are. Finally. Yay. Yay. We, um, <laughs> hey, everybody. We tried to do this like 11 times at least, right, guys? And uh, YouTube Hangouts are having some technical difficulties. But that's OK, because we are back, and we are talking about the, uh, the Lumia 925. We're just going to sit around this. Uh, metaphoric table here and and talk about what it means for for Nokia what it means for Windows Phone what it means in the general uh, smartphone industry but before we get started um, I'm just gonna recap some stuff here and then we're gonna let uh, Jaime Michael and Taylor uh, talk about what they think about the Lumia 925 so what is the 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 Lumia 925. There are a bunch of videos on Pocket Now right now that you can see. We sent Tony uh, to London and he got some hands-on time with it. It's basically like a Lumia 920, uh, but it's significantly thinner and lighter. So it's going from 10.7 millimeters down to 8.5. Uh, the 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 weight is much less by about 40 grams, going from 185 to 139. And there's some interesting metal construction going on. The edges are actually aluminum or aluminium. As if you will, <laughs> yeah. If you will, Sir Johnny Ive. <laughs> uh, so, so kind of a, a, a Lumia to, to bring it up to speed with what other manufacturers are doing, especially HTC and Apple with the aluminum thing. Uh, it's coming to the U.S. to T-Mobile first, and maybe AT&T later. And then it's got some interesting software stuff going on. So, for example, it's got this awesome double tap to unlock. And what that will do, it will bring you to your lock screen. So it's not going to bring you right into the phone, but it'll skip the step of you having to feel for the uh, camera button uh, or the, the standby button. Uh, it's also going to have a new Nokia smart camera software, which does some really interesting stuff in action scenarios. So let's say you, you've got your, your uh, friend running down a field, and, and you press the, uh, the, the action shot button. It'll take 10 shots. And then there's a lot of cool stuff you can do with it. And by the way, this is coming uh, to the, the Lumia 920 and other Nokia models. Um, it also will actually superimpose multiple images on top of one another. So you can actually see a picture of your friend running down the field in, like three, in three different instances. So some really cool software there. Um, I do have a question. Can I interrupt you for a second? Go for it. Do you know if they have the other uh, technology from Scalato? I was talking yeah, about earlier. Yeah, actually, it's because of the purchase of Scalato that right. they're including all these features on this smart camera app. Yeah, right, but so. do you know if they have like the erase feature and the rewind feature? Yeah, it does because that'd be great. That's awesome. I, I I do know that they have some blurring, and out of those ten shots, you can. I'm not really sure if they have the erase feature yet. I I, I haven't been able to confirm that, but I do know, and they did mention it in the keynote that because because of their purchase with Scalato, it, because of the acquisition, they're including all these features and they're involving them over time. That's yeah, right. Check it out. And, check and it for out. anyone, when you, when you Google Scalato, yeah, you come up with Grace Scalato, Merlin Scalato, and. Scarlato Restaurant, which is apparently a great Italian place in New York City. <laughs> what the hell are you guys talking about? <laughs> okay, so it, the, the technology we're talking about is what you see in BlackBerry 10, because they yeah. license the, the software from Scalato, and what you get is the rewind feature in the BlackBerry 10's camera, so you uh. take a picture and you can, it's, it's kind of like Best Shot, but instead of changing the entire picture, you change just someone's face. Back from the to, moment before, yeah. With, right. Without making it look photoshopped, it looks like you just took another right. picture that was perfect. Yeah, and right. for example, in the Galaxy S4, there's you, you talked about that technology where you can actually erase people from a shot that you don't want there. Yeah, that, 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 that feature Scalato. was actually invented by Scalato as well. Yeah. Interesting. So it was a company that Nokia purchased last year. year last year, exactly. Last year. So, so a lot of, a lot of interesting interesting camera stuff coming to the uh, the 925. The camera itself is pretty much the same, except that they've added a sixth lens uh, to the array to help with optical image stabilization. It's still an 8.7 megapixel camera. It's got uh, dual LED flash, not the xenon flash that we're seeing on the 928, which is another topic of conversation. Uh, the so, so the first thing I want to ask uh, is a question directed at Michael, who Loves the 920 probably more yeah. than any other phone. What do you think of there? There it is. What do you think about this 925? Are you gonna Are you gonna buy one and will it replace your 920? So here's the thing. Uh, first of all, Google tells me that I'm muted. Yeah, am I muted or no? 
No, no, you're, you're good. What a you're good. Very, what an interesting little banner I have then. It tells um, me I'm muted too. Yeah, thanks, Hangouts. But uh, <laughs> here's the thing with the with the nine twenty, and I just uh, I just posted an editorial about uh, uh, that was largely based on a comment that somebody left, a very prescient comment where it was like, you know, the the uh, the, the Lumia nine twenty five is a, an, an aesthetic reinvention. Uh, and it's exactly the opposite of the Galaxy S4, but we'll talk about that in a second. But the, the 920 has always been a heavy, um, kind of unwieldy device, and I've apologized for it, and I've told, I've had arguments with Brandon, with, with, with everyone, about how I don't mind the weight, because I like a substantial feel in the hand. But um, it's definitely the outlier. This is 185 grams. It's heavier than a Galaxy Note 2. It's a tank. Exactly. Yeah. I mean, it's it's absurd. So I can understand why people would be put off by that. I mean, um, you don't have to wear a belt anymore. <laughs> right. I can yeah, upgrade yeah. your phone. Right. With the summertime coming, I like a lighter phone. But <laughs> the thing is, so I think the weight reduction was a really good idea. I have to say, aesthetically, I, I don't know. And I would like to hear your guys' thoughts on this. Um, I don't think the 925 look looks better than the. I like its aluminum rail along the side, but I think it's a not a very good looking phone compared to this 928 which has a very distinctive but also uh, well thought out uh, aesthetic you know you have this extreme minimalism on the back here which we don't have on the 925 you got all those holes and the big old raised lens and you know i mean what do you guys the 9 the 925 does look generic but but you make a very good point that uh, the weight and the size of the 920 is off putting to many including me and mm -hmm. and you get to the cell phone store and you're feeling and you're like, oh, this is just too much. I'm going to go with the Galaxy S3 or the Galaxy S4. And now Nokia has kindly uh, kind of removed that barrier. Taylor, you were going to say something? Yeah, I was going to say the uh, just like when I saw the leaked pictures and we talked about it either in a podcast or on a live, the 925 looks like, oh, great, lawn, lawn, lawnmower over there. Um, the Tender. 925 looks just like an HTC device. It looks like a, like a refresh of a Windows Phone 8X or something, you know. Um, it doesn't look like Nokia. It's I don't know. Maybe yeah. maybe I'm alone in that. But no, it, you're not alone in that. It, it doesn't look as much like Nokia. But I I I would it would be my argument that it doesn't look as good as an HTC 8X revision. Like I, I, yeah. I there's a lot we're, going on with it that I don't think is great. We're suckers for we're suckers for unibody. Yeah, we're suckers for unibody, and that's going to make it feel like if it's got that separation just. Let it have a removable battery, which I don't believe it does, right? It's nope. all fixed. It doesn't come apart. So, but, uh, but uh, the back cover, you can take the back cover off, can't you? Yeah, because you, no, you have to replace it with a, a wireless charging. It's either a back cover or a no, case. That's, that's a case, actually. That's, ah. a, that's a, a case that you place on the phone. So it's got three, it's got three ports at the bottom oh. that, that, that snap that for is, wireless charging. That is weak sauce 101. That's sucks. Please. Okay, so so am I the only guy here? Am I the only no. guy who's actually not a fan of Windows phones <laughs> that actually that actually likes that phone? Because I actually no, I like do. it. No, yeah, and we're not saying we, I don't think anybody's saying we don't like it, but I, I just the look of it is not as refined as the nine twenty. I don't think. I have a question. I have a question. I'm going to go back to this wireless charging thing. Uh, Michael, does the Ative S have wireless charging? No, it does not. That's very interesting because. If you look at the Windows phones that have wireless charging, they are a little bit thicker. Like the Lumia yeah, yeah. 920. What other phones, uh, Windows phone, are, are, are the Verizon version of the 8X has it. Um, some other, some of the mid-range Lumias have back covers available. I think the 820 has a back cover available. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah. I'm just wondering if there's some technology issue here where the phone's got to increase in thickness, unlike a Galaxy S3 where you just change the back cover. Well, well, well it requires is, a coil. Cool. It requires a special right. coil. The Nexus 4 has it built in, and it's pretty slim. Right. right. It doesn't necessarily have to be a thick or heavy device to have wireless charging. That's no. why I like, well, uh, pretty uh, much flame Nokia over that, because, yeah. the, because the when, Nexus 4. That was always the excuse, right? It was like, yeah, well, it has to be big and thick because wireless charging, and I kind of bought into that for a while until I did that mod of the Galaxy S3 where I took the coil out of the Palm Pixie back, and that coil, I mean, it's, it's thin as anything. I mean, it's just copper wire is all it is. Yeah, the, the biggest part of what your wireless charging is going to be is the actual module, the charging, the inductive charging module in the charger, not the actual receiver. Yeah, yeah, but, yeah, but your Galaxy S3 looked like if it had implants after you placed that thing on Well, the that was because the battery... Do that, was, that, was, <laughs> that was because I was using stone knives and bear skins. <laughs> <laughs> I was cracking up. <laughs>
I wonder. I wonder if no Nokia is saying something about the state of wireless charging by making this an optional accessory, not just building it right into the phone. You know, I'll tell you this much: for those people that like the Lumia 920 design, if if you look at the phone at the Lumia 925 with the case of that, you know, that plastic case that you put for wireless charging, it ends up looking like a 920 once you snap that thing on. Anyways. Yeah, it. They're basically, uh, I guess participating in the death of wireless charging in mobile, or, or at least not pushing <laughs> it forward because they're saying it's not important enough to build into the phone you know, natively. It, it's something that you can add on. And when yeah. you have to add it on, when you have to buy a wireless charger and a wireless adapter for your phone, it adds up to $70, $80, 100 or more, and then no, it's what? useless. Uh, yeah. But honestly, this is like the sexiest wireless charging cover that I've ever seen. Can you drop it a is. link in, in the in the chat? Because I can't. Uh, I've not seen the the cover. I haven't seen it either. And and here's the the Nexus uh, Four for reference. It's yeah, very thin and wireless charging is built in. So uh, I'll I'll try, I'll try to find one. But you know, going back to the design, you know, I I don't know. I I do like. You know, I, I, I can't understand why Nokia wasn't able to bring out a full aluminum body for this design. Uh, it's funny, but this is like the first time that I see an aluminum phone in black that I like more than the gray one. I think that gray I one think, is like... Go ahead. I think they, if they did an all-aluminum phone, people are going to say, hey, they copy HTC, they copied Apple. So they did like kind of a combo thing where the sides are aluminum, the edges where you, where you touch the phone, but the back is that kind of soft-touch plastic. Here we well, go. Well, but well, but we're not saying that that you know they're copying Samsung for going for the with a plastic you know design. It's like I, I think that it would have been cool if they would have brought a full aluminum body. That's, oh, that's look, my Taylor. Point. Taylor has a visual aid. What the heck is this? That oh, is the, the wireless charger. Oh the my goodness! Case. It's like an extremity of some. It's like a. It's an exoskeleton. <laughs> oh god! It's like so a just... spacesuit that yeah, yeah it latches on there. Can, Taylor, can you scale that down so we can see the whole thing or no? Uh, yeah. That's the whole picture. Oh, okay. Let me see yeah. if I can find another one. Yeah, it's you're right. It's like a spacesuit. It's. Uh... While, while Taylor is looking, Jaime, I have a question. Have you ever played the game Jenga? You know, where, where you have the box and you pull them out. Oh. I played giant uh, Jenga last weekend. By no, the way. not not really, not really. Oh, I, I was going to say, because you've got, like, a real-life version of Jenga behind you with, like, your 15 iPad boxes. What, what is the deal with that? <laughs> <laughs> Why do you have four boxes. iPad boxes? Do you do you have one in every bathroom or something? I, I sort of, sort of. <laughs> I actually have kept all the boxes of the iPads that I've owned and iPhones that I've owned. That's the reason. It's like your MacBooks that I've owned. Okay, yeah. so Taylor, oh, Taylor's yeah. uh, showing us an image of a red backing for the, for the uh, 925. It's oh. thick. It's very thick. Oh my god, and it's gross looking. And it doesn't protect the phone at all, so if you're going to have a case on there, you would at least want protection, right? That's just kind oh. of like a... It's piggybacking. It's like a monkey on its back that does yeah. one thing. I can't oh. help but think that Taylor, uh, that the Taylor's voice is coming through this case. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I, I, have a question. I have a question for you guys. Uh, which has been haunting me ever since 3 in the morning when I woke up, because I'm obviously in central time, not like lucky you guys, where it was 5 a.m. with the event. Um, where was Stephen Elop? Yeah, this is a where good question. Where was Stephen Elop? I mean, He's how on a could cruise. it be that, that Stephen Elop announced the Lumia 520? He comes on events to announce Asha. Not e those are not even smartphones. Why was he not available for this event? What does this mean? Seriously. I think it was symbolic of the of what this means to the company. They don't want people to think that like this is their flagship for this year. They're going to come out with some new hotness with uh, with the new Windows Phone 8.5, and it's going to be a, a big leap. It'll be the the real successor to the 920. This is kind of a mid cycle refresh that get people reinterested in, in the Nokia brand, uh, but doesn't get them all the way there to being competitive again. Well, what do you guys Agreed. think? Agree. Um, I think. I don't, I don't know if you got my email about the editorial idea that I'm going to go with, but uh, it's something along that effect where they should have learned something from Samsung and HTC in that you don't need to release 20 different devices, one for every carrier. Um, to get your point across, you need... It, it, people want one phone uh, to choose from, I guess. Um, you know, the same phone on every carrier, just so you don't have to pick and choose what you want. Even though these are all the same... Uh, they have mostly the same specifications. They're different models, and it's just not uh, smart in terms of branding and marketing. Right. Because it's yeah. kind of confusing. 
You have the Lumia 920, you have the Lumia 925, the 928, you have the 820, the 800, the 900. I mean, it's just... 821, 822. <laughs> oh, my God. It's, it's like Blackberry. The 810. The 810. No, it's true. I mean, the 810, the 820, the... The eight. Uh, I, I even forget the numbers. They're pretty much the same phone on a different chassis. I, and I don't seems... like these these naming schemes. It reminds me of back in the early two thousands when you had the like SPM five H S W Q R three one seven nine six I I I I H T. Oh, oh no, yeah, God, the, Taylor. The curve eighty eight X X. Yeah, what are you doing? What is that? What is that thing? This this, this is actually. Um, that's the new Q5. This is, this is an <laughs> antique. Just like it. <laughs> Taylor, can, can, yeah. you, can you turn it to the side there so you can see the thickness of that phone? Can you I'll put it compare Here's the to Nexus 4. Here. Compare it to the Nexus 4. Here. Yeah. Have fun with that. Oh, yeah. What, what do you got, Jaime, over there? I, this is the BlackBerry Tour. I, yeah, this is the BlackBerry Tour. Oh, man. Yeah, I've, oh, got, yeah. I've got them all over there. Oh, hold on. Hold on. I, I got, I've got something better. Look at this. I've got one of those, too. Oh, yeah. Yes. Oh, yay. Yeah, <laughs> but it, it's exactly like that because there was the black the BlackBerry Curve eighty three ten, the eighty three twenty, the eighty three thirty, right. the eighty three fifty, the eighty three sixty. I mean, just so, but oh but, but there is merit bad, to this idea, bad. right? If you want, so, yeah, look at the thickness of this tissue box. I mean, that is thick. <laughs> <laughs> Guys, I'll show you. There's the, this is this is thick right oh, here. What, right. what is that? That's what? a SPH A eighty five hundred or SCH eighty five hundred from two thousand. Is that, is that your DD now, Michael? Yeah, man, I just roll with this. You know, I got tired of color. <laughs> no, but here's the thing. Like, there is merit to this approach in, in that Nokia is just basically, you know, saturating the, the market. And where, where did they come from? They came from a place where their mind share was completely in the toilet. Their their market share was just collapsing. And I, I think they don't want to lose that. I, don't think, I think they don't want to lose presence at every particular level. So while, yes, it's confusing, I wish they'd done some different naming choices. I think they have to do this as far as just pushing volume out there. And it's just like, yeah, we know we just dropped this 610. Well, here's a 520. Eat it. You know what I mean? It's kind of blowing up in their faces, though. They're not really giving any love to the U.S. carriers. Are they They're not getting, performing. Are they growing, I mean, though? I don't, I don't know. I don't think so. I mean... Uh, shareholders and investors are very upset with Stephen Eloff. We were reading about that. I, I, was, I, I was about to say, we, we all read the fact that Stephen Eloff is not, uh, you know, the investors are not really happy with his performance. So, you know, I, I don't know. Could it be that, you know, the Nokia is sending us the message that Eloff is probably not going to be in the company soon or something? That's a, very, that's a very good possibility. I mean, he's, he's failed or the company has failed to do an HTC or a Samsung, which is to get a flagship device on every carrier. And, and we're seeing now that that is the magic, and HTC is benefiting from that magic. Uh, guys, we're getting to the end here of the roundtable. I want to ask one final question. I want to keep this as close to 30 minutes as possible. Uh, what do you think this means for Windows Phone? Does it move the needle at all? Uh, not really, no. All right, why do you think so? In the, in the grand scheme of things, no, because it's just another device. Um, and it's going to be buried in a couple of weeks by the carriers, the sales reps on the ground. The, the first point of contact for consumers don't care. Um, I guarantee you none of them on launch day will really care about the device. They might, they might push it for three days, a week, and then after that it's going to be back to the HTC One, the Galaxy S4, and everything else. Yeah, um, that's exactly how it'll go, and that's unfortunate because it, it's probably going to be a good device, just like most other Windows phones device, Windows phone devices before it. But it's it's all about getting the um, sales reps to care. That's that's the, the big problem with Windows phone is they don't care, so consumers aren't going to buy. Good point. What what do you think, Jaime? Uh, I don't know. I, I don't know. Nokia's like pulling an apple here. It's 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 funny because. You know, Apple can be the company that comes up with an iteration of a phone when it comes to hardware, but then changes the design and people will buy it. That's just the way it works. And they're trying to do this here with this Lumia. I mean, this is pretty much a Lumia 920 on another chassis. And if the Lumia 920 wasn't able to move the needle, then, you know, doing just bringing out another phone with a different design doesn't necessarily change anything. And, you know, it's funny. I mean, it's not like if this phone is cutting edge in anything in comparison to anything that's already out there. So there is, again, there is nothing different in this phone that changes Windows Phone. 
And so I, I don't really expect it to move anything. It'll probably just, again, as Taylor mentions, it'll be buried eventually. It, it'll turn up to be an exclusive on certain carriers, and therefore not everybody will get the phone. The other people will keep the 920, and, and it's just going to be another Windows phone out there in the market. And that's that's really sad because I, I do notice that Nokia is trying hard. They're just not trying the right things, in my opinion. Do you agree that, uh, that they're not trying the right things, Michael? Uh, yeah, yeah. I, I think that they were on the right track for a while there, and now, now I don't think they they are with this particular iteration. You know, listen, it's good that they that they improved on the 920. The 920 is a is a solid device, but it needed improvement in some areas that's been taken care of. And wait, uh, that AMOLED screen coming back to the to the nine nine two X line is a is a great thing as well. It really makes Windows Phone pop. Camera improvements, yada yada. I, I, I think though that if we had seen this earlier. It would have made a yeah, big yeah. difference. You know, we've had the yeah. 920. You know, the 920 is beautiful, and we love talking about it in a, as a device in an international context. But from an American point of view, you know what you need to have a 920? You need AT&T. Not every American yeah. wants to be on AT&T or can be on AT&T. Yeah. So, you know, we come back to the whole carrier exclusives thing. It's going to be nice to have the 928 on Verizon. It's too late, though. I mean, you know, if all this had happened when the excitement surrounding the 920 was fresh, that would have made yeah, a difference. Would have been awesome. now, this is a rehash of a phone that people is not necessarily old, but we've done our after the buzz on it already. That you know, people are fickle, even outside of our circles. They're not going to really latch onto this. It's uh, it's not going to move the needle at all. We need to wait for the next flagship. Yeah. What is the maximum number of people that can actually buy these phones? It's limited right. by the carrier availability. Yeah, yeah. I mean, in the U.S., the 928. You're looking at what? Uh, maybe 160 million total that will ever be able to buy it. Right? Yeah, on Verizon and, and Sprint. Right. And, yeah. and how many of those are actually going to buy it? A right. Small, small percentage. Because only what 57 percent of those are smartphone users. And how many of those are going to upgrade to a Windows Phone first? Taylor, all this math, it's else. just uh, it's making my Boom. head. <laughs> I haven't done <laughs> math know, forever. But, no, I, but but you guys you guys have a yeah. solid point. I mean, their market penetration in back in the fall of last year was terrible, because only AT and T got like a real flagship phone. Um, they were the only ones that got the hot Lumia 920, and then everybody got an 822 or an 820. Um, and you know, yeah, they got the Windows Phone 8X. No comment on this. This is a pretty phone. Uh, that I would love for it to run Android, but there's nothing really hot about this phone at all. Um, so, yeah, I, I feel that... I, I think that Nokia's approach is, is good for them because they're getting the exclusive deals with AT&T that'll pop up some money initially, but they're not getting any market share. So eventually, even AT&T could turn their back on them, and that, what's that going to turn out for them? I, I, really, I really like Taylor's point that it really starts with the salespeople on the floor. And what's going to happen is that you're going to have a 925 next to an HTC One next to a Galaxy S4. And the sales rep's going to be like, yeah, these two guys have 1080p screens. One's light, one's heavier. And then they're going to get Quad to the core. 925 yeah. and be like, oh, it runs the Windows phone. And, and then they're going to be like, but I want the Android, yo. <laughs> and... You know, it's, I it's, want the new Galaxy. I want the new Galaxy. The new, yeah, you got the you got the new Droid. You got the new Galaxy. Yeah, you like you got the yeah. new Droid. Uh, so, guys, I want to conclude this. I think we can all agree on one thing: that Lumia needs to put Android on its phones, and that would solve <laughs> a lot. Well, that that Nokia does. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> no, I, I I still don't agree, but uh, I understand. <laughs> oh come on now! You would buy a Nokia made Android phone in a heartbeat. No, I no, I, I would. would not. No, yeah, I, I, that I, is I, a lie. Podcast. No, I, I really wouldn't. I, 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 I think that I would. And Nokia should stay firmly in bed with with Windows Phone. I think Stephen Elop. I want to say this before we go. I think I don't think Stephen Elop's doing a bad job. You know how long it took uh, Dan Hesse to turn Sprint around? I know we're talking about a carrier and not an OEM, but it's it, like it took him like three years to get any kind of results because the company was in such trouble. I think Nokia was in really big trouble. I think Elab has taken a lot of steps that were many of which were not very popular, but I think the company is in a better place than it was. Maybe they need to get in bed with HP. Was that? Get some web OS action. I don't want to, oh. man. To, to, oh, oh, you're gonna make. You know, spin uh, <laughs> around. This, you made him spin around in his chair. Okay, okay. You, you, you know, I'm gonna give you an analogy. This is like. This is like. This is like NASCAR. You know, knowing that you're gonna compete in NASCAR and arriving with a VW Beetle. It's a beautiful car. <laughs> it's got everything you want, but it's not a NASCAR racing vehicle in this point of the game. And so in my particular case, I mean, think about it. HTC does Windows Phone and they do Android. Uh, Samsung does Windows Phone and they do Android. Even Samsung, who is Samsung, has not been able to succeed with Windows Phone at any point. 
even if they were part of the pioneers. So if I were Stephen Elop, I'd be like, yeah, sure, these are my Lumia lineups, and hey, these are my Android lineups. I mean, what's the it's what's a, the problem with having variety? Some, Nokia does not have the resources that, that a bigger company like Samsung does. They can't split their focus like that. They're, they're losing money every quarter. They should, the they used, they used they're losing rich. millions and billions every quarter. They used to be ball and fresh with lots of dough, but then things <laughs> happened, and then they weren't. Anyway, guys, we gotta we got to wrap this up. I actually want to say thank you to the viewers because we have as many viewers in this sort of niche-like uh, roundtable discussion uh, that we do in our bigger general purpose Pocket Now Lives. And so that's awesome that you guys really care about what we have to say and come and, and join us. So th thank you for, for joining us and thank you Taylor and Michael and Jaime for sounding off about the Lumia 920 fave. And we have plenty more coverage on Pocket Now, some videos from Tony. Uh, and, uh, we have we have a podcast coming later in the week and another pocket now live and uh, maybe another roundtable. Is that right? Yeah, yeah. we're going to have a roundtable tomorrow for Google I/O. Let's see what they bring. We're, we're going to be talking about Google I/O tomorrow. We are going to have a podcast on Thursday and Pocket Now Live on Friday. So and of course NASCAR. <laughs> Sorry, I had to do that because you made a NASCAR analogy, and I live in NASCAR country, so I had to. Let's Enjoy leave it at that. NASCAR. We're, we are going to conclude with NASCAR. Thank you, everybody, NASCAR. for joining us. <laughs>